All right, guys, welcome back to episode eight of the boat restoration series. Before I jump right in, I just want to update you guys a little bit on what I've been up to over the last while and why I haven't been uploading episodes lately. As some of you may know already, I'm currently working on a documentary focusing on the refugee crisis. I recently spent two months on Lesvos at Moria, filming documentary content with NGOs and hearing first-hand stories from refugees themselves. I'm actually heading back next month to continue working on this documentary and to get the content I need to finish it. In order to get back out there, I'm paying out of pocket, but I am also running a GoFundMe to help cover my costs of living and travel expenses. So if you are interested in donating towards this project, feel free to check out the link in the description below. Anything would be greatly appreciated. and I'll make sure to keep you guys all updated on the progress while I'm out there. This is a project I really feel passionate about and pursuing. I really appreciate all the support so far. Thanks for taking the time to listen to what I had to say and uh, let's jump right back into the boat progress. So first I started back up on the bow, ripping up this canvas material. I'm not sure 100% if this is calico, but it's like a woven material that was adhered to the deck to help protect it and it's certainly done its job. When my parents bought this boat originally, the entire deck was covered in this material. We were fortunate enough to get some consistent sunshine here in Harland. We made use of this as much as possible. We took the weather to our advantage and uh, I made sure to air out the bilge as much as possible. So there were a few areas on the deck where I had mastic last autumn in the damp weather and now the wood had contracted with this heat wave so I re grouted it. Alright guys, I'll let you in on a little secret if you haven't noticed already. You can tell that I'm not a professional carpenter as I'm using duct tape to mask each side of the timber planking. Okay, so right now I'm in the cabin, I'm on the starboard side. Right above me is where a sliding door should go in place. And because there's no sliding door there, the rainwater is dripping straight down onto the diagonal mahogany planking. And this timber is quite soft. It, the leak must have been happening for quite some time. Okay, so after I've aired out this section, I've just flooded it with wood hardener. Wood hardener is like acetone. It kind of evaporates and then it sets rock solid. So it's the best way to kind of preserve the timber. I, I can't replace this this planking because it's below water level. It is kind of a priority, but later on down the road, that's what I'll do when I get the boat out of the water. So after I've applied the wood hardener, I'm probably gonna follow this up with epoxy resin, just so it's definitely waterproofed. Right here, I'm just sealing the deck planking on the port side. I'm redoing this section because, again, when we had the heat wave, or as we were getting this heat wave, the timber contracted and it took the Tech 7 with it. First off, I used a belt sander to remove any residual glue left from the canvas. I then removed any canvas that was left, stuck down, and removed the cleats as well to make sure that there was nowhere left unsanded. While I was belt sanding up the bow, I just couldn't believe how well the deck started to look. Just seeing the timber in its natural form and uh, how preserved it was was just incredible. After that, we removed the bow rail to make sure I could sand right out to the edges of the bow deck planking.
So next I clean out the gaps between each plank. The tool I'm actually using here is a sharpened paint roller. So right here I'm actually using whatever tape I have at hand. I ran out of masking tape so I had to use whatever I had to get the job done. I'm not knocking Tech 7, it has its great uses, but it seems to be that used on the deck planking where there's lots of movement, it's just not good for that kind of work. So I've learned later on down the road, obviously as I'm going along I'm learning, and uh, it looks like Sikaflex is the best stuff to use for marine use. Believe it or not, Sikaflex is actually the more affordable one. I buy it online. Locally, Tech 7 is just like the markup on this stuff is just crazy. It's not worth the money, to be honest. So I'm glad I found Sikaflex and that people are using it in marine use. So next up I started sealing around the window plywood where it meets the deck. So I found a little hole or a hollow and I just cut down a scrap piece of wood, put it in place, put in plenty of mastic and uh, surprisingly this works so well in, in places and uh, just filling those gaps, stopping any leaks. So I used two pack varnish to fill any of the countersunk screw holes and I just did a few, few layers to bring it up to the, the surface of the deck so then when I did my coats of varnish it would be nice and flush and I wouldn't have any bevels or hollows. So I found a little bit of rotten planking on the starboard side of the deck and where the plywood comes down. So obviously the water was just residing down there and uh, it rotted that section of deck. So not a big fix, again doing the trick where I, I get a scrap piece of wood and I cut it down to size, get it in there, clean out the entire gap first, made sure I, I just flooded it again with wood hardener and uh, got my piece to fit in perfectly. Then you put in the mastic, put in your piece of, of wood to fill the gap and then continue back with your mastic and seal it nice and flush. I wiped down the bow where I had sanded with acetone on a cloth and this just made sure you pick up any residual dust and it just means that when you're varnishing it doesn't get into your varnish it makes a huge difference it's definitely something you have to do i know varnishing outside is not the best situation to do it in you know you got to make it as nice as possible prep your area and uh, it definitely goes a long way in the end So right here I'm actually using like West System 2-pack varnish. This one is actually discontinued, can't find it on their website. So we've actually had this from when my parents were working on the boat originally. Believe it or not, it's still working 100%. Goes to show you if your cans are sealed, this stuff is as good as new. So it looks like on their website you can buy different hardeners. If you want it to cure slower or cure faster, depends how you're working and what conditions you're working in with this varnish. So I made sure each time I did layers of, of varnish, I, I mixed up enough to, to cover the entire bow. I really didn't have any left over at the end of it. 
To apply this varnish, I just used a decent brush. I didn't roll this on. Some people prefer to roll it, but the brush seemed to work quite well. It didn't leave any streaks. I just made sure to keep using the wet edge. Every time I'd apply some more varnish to the brush, keep rolling off on that wet, wet edge and don't have any buildup of varnish. So in between each layer of varnish, once it had dried, usually the next day, I would hand sand it. I'd use like 240 grit sandpaper. You wanna make sure you've got good adhesion for your next layer of varnish and that you get that smooth finish at the end of it. It's definitely tough working in direct sunlight and break was much needed, so it was time to cool down. I'm ripping up the old epoxy which my parents applied years ago and uh, it's just man it's it's so hard to rip this stuff up knowing that my parents had put so much work and time applying this this epoxy resin and, and fiberglass mat to seal the roof it's just hard to, to, to have to tear up such good work but it had to be done and uh, it was actually it would, wouldn't have deteriorated like this if my parents had followed it up with the UV protection varnish two-pack stuff I was using on the bow but it has to be done and uh, we're just gonna take the job step by step and uh, see some great progress so underneath all that epoxy it must have gotten really really hot the wood started to contract and crack in places and even where the tongue and groove is on the timber planking it, you can see right down to the styrofoam insulation so again what I did is I, I made a little piece got it to, you know cut it down to fit in place followed up with plenty of mastic below it and on top and that would seal any of the gaps so again I'm just cleaning out all the gaps with that sharpened roller and then regretting So where I couldn't flake up any of the old epoxy, I just hit it with the belt sander real quick and that did the job perfectly. Masking off the roof with the help of my cousin and her friend, teamwork, it goes a long way, really helps speed up the whole process. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate the help guys, so thank you. We applied Sikaflex both on the lip and along the edge for the most areas of contact and then securing in place with brass flathead screws. Where was it? These edge capping pieces are split at the top so I had to remove these. I'll be making up two new ones and putting those in place. So 
sadly the belt on my belt sander had snapped and all my other belts were too rough to continue sanding so in replacement for the sander I just used this little hand scraper and I did a perfect job it didn't take off too much off the top of the timber and I guess this is similar to hand planing planks it's, it's the same thing and uh, it actually worked perfectly So since applying the bondex to the roof, we've also put in the air vents. The air vents are in place and also on the starboard side there on the roof, that huge hole, the janky ass hole that my dad cut for this stove. That's, that's where the chimney for the stove is gonna be. And uh, yeah, I'm just not gonna let that slide. Alright guys, so that's it for episode 8 of the Boat Restoration Series. I can't thank you guys enough for watching, for following along on the episodes. And uh, even while I was out on Lesvos, I couldn't believe the traction these videos were gaining. The people, you know, like, you guys were commenting, you know, waiting for updates, you know, asking me different things and uh, just digging the, the whole process and everything. So, you know, I'm really grateful for all the support so far. Follow along on the, on the, the actual progress I do with the documentary while I'm away on Lesvos. And then uh, make sure to, uh, to comment if you have any questions or whatever. And uh, I'll get back to them as soon as possible, guys. I'm always here for you guys. And likewise, I appreciate the support. So that's it, guys. I'm going to stop talking and then wrap it up. And uh, see you guys in the next episode. And also make sure, stay productive and have fun creating.